Greetings, salutations, what's up? Welcome everybody to Crypto Night. Got a couple things we wanna talk about today, uh, but before we get into it, remember to hit that like button and subscribe. And if you got something to say, make sure you drop us a line in the comments. So before we get started, let's kick things off with a quote from Satoshi Nakamoto himself. Quote, if you don't believe it or don't get it, I don't have time to try to convince you, sorry. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get right into it. So it's been an interesting week in the world of Bitcoin, uh, particularly in the last several days. There's been some interesting news that has come out. And uh, interestingly, the the price continues to be very range bound. So just in the last five days, we are trading within a 40 to $50 uh, range. Uh, as of uh, the last couple minutes ago, we were at $3,492. U.S. dollars per token uh, compared to with uh, or compared to about 3,450 from just a few days ago. The reason why this is striking to me is because we've had a lot of news, uh, as I said before. Um, interestingly enough, just a couple days ago, Joe Rogan and Jack Dorsey uh, conducted an interview together. Uh, Joe Rogan has one of the most popular podcast out right now. He's got about four and a half million subscribers on the YouTube platform, not to mention uh, folks that listen to him, the number of folks that listen to him on iTunes. But anyway, uh, Joe Rogan was interviewing uh, Jack Dorsey. Uh, Most of the interview relates to Twitter. Uh, But just in the last uh, few minutes of the interview, the conversation shifted to cryptocurrency. So you guys should check that out. But to summarize, you know, Jack Dorsey wears many hats. Uh, Net worth is about five to six billion dollars, being an early investor in a lot of uh, the popular uh, technology companies that uh, I'm sure you have apps for on your phone. Uh, Today, he is the CEO of Twitter, which has about 300 million subscribers, and he's the CEO of Square which, uh, as we mentioned in a previous video, has about 7 million users today. Point being, uh, A, uh, Jack has been very successful in the technology space, and also, as he is a leader on these platforms, you know, he is clearly influential. Uh, But one of the things that he said, and I'm just going to quote one of the things that I thought he said that was very striking, he said, quote, I believe the Internet will have a native currency. And I don't know if it's Bitcoin, but I think it will be Bitcoin, given all the tests it has been through and the principles behind it and how it was created, end quote. So I thought that was very interesting. Again, you have a very influential, very successful person from Silicon Valley expressing his point of view on Bitcoin, not to mention the fact that the Squares platform actually allows people to easily get involved with Bitcoin, if you're using, for example, the Cash App, which is a part of the Squares platform, you automatically get access to being able to buy uh, Bitcoin today. It's even easier than using Coinbase. So when this next wave of adoption comes around, I expect that uh, Square could easily uh, participate in that. Second story is uh, one one of our favorite topics, the VanEck CBOE SolidX uh, ETF application. Now, remember, uh, Vanek Vanek is a huge player in the space. They were instrumental in bringing the the gold ETF uh, on board several decades ago. Today, they manage uh, about $50 billion. Um, But a couple weeks ago, they pulled their application uh, as the the CS, sorry, the CEC, or the SEC, (laughs) was closed because of the government shutdown. Uh, and so in order to try to thwart uh, any negative information or a negative outcome because of the government shutdown, I think it was very wise for the Van Eck team to pull that application. But as we know, the government shutdown ended and news out just last week, Van Eck, Van Eck quickly re-submitted uh, their application. So, you know, this is good news for the space, but you know, maybe at this point, people have been disappointed so much, they just don't care. But in my mind, one of the biggest stories to come out this week relates to uh, Fidelity. So what you're looking at here on the screen is 
uh, Abigail Johnson, who is the chairman, CEO, and president of Fidelity. Uh, just by the numbers again, she's worth a cool $16 billion. But let's remember that Fidelity has 27 million individual investors as customers, and those investors invest $7 trillion. But anyway, uh, in my mind, this was some of the big, this was the biggest news story out last week. Um, so Fidelity Digital Assets is a business that sits under the Fidelity uh, overall business, and they've been focused on uh, commercializable opportunities in the crypto space. Well, they put out a story in Bloomberg that said that they were basically very close to launching one of their custody solutions. And so I'm just going to read this quote really quickly. Uh, I thought it was very, uh, very interesting story. So they say, quote, we're currently serving a select set of eligible clients as we continue to build our initial solutions. So they put this story out on Tuesday. Uh, and then they go on to say over the next several months, they will thoughtfully engage with and prioritize prospective clients based on needs, jurisdiction, and other factors. So what this means, folks, is that, you know, we're not talking about um, small potatoes here. Uh, we're talking about institutional investors who are already using their platform on an experimental basis for custodian uh, services. So when this, if this comes through in the next couple months, I think there was uh, in the story in Bloomberg, um, the, the writer alluded to this potentially being onboarded by March once final tests are done. This could really be, you know, a big, uh, this could support an additional wave of more capital flowing in the way of, of cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin in particular. So remember, uh, we're talking about a market value of a little more than a hundred billion for all uh, of the cryptocurrencies. And maybe half of, roughly half of that is covered by Bitcoin. And so you have trillions of dollars of, uh, of other assets that are being um, held in custody today. And so Fidelity can solve this problem. Um, I, I, I shouldn't say I, I will, I will go on to say that many believe that uh, we should expect um, some fresh capital coming into the space. So just wanted to share that with you again. I think this is one of the biggest stories from last week. It, uh, it wasn't, uh, it didn't show up on their website, but it was posted in on Bloomberg and also on Fidelity Digital Assets Medium page. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Remember to like, subscribe, and we'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Bye.